Mr. Stard's return as manager of the Redwick and Chiltern Hills had at first caused a bit of tension to return to the line, but it had finally calmed again. A lot of the engines were apprehensive at first, finding it hard to place their trust in a man who had been to court with charges as vile as his, regardless of if he was proven innocent or not. Even though the engines seemed to be against him, he was determined to show that he was truly trying to atone for his mistakes, with the hopes to gain their trust back. The memory of what had happened to Gregory could, of course, never be forgotten, but Mr. Stard wanted to make it clear that he was not trying to just forget and move on. The engines would often see him down at Endon, leaving flowers and maintaining the general upkeep of the area around the memorial, giving some of them hope that he was truly trying to change his ways. King Richard and Hart Hall, however, were still wary around Mr. Stard, and would often interrogate him to ensure he was staying on his best behavior. Though he grew tired of their constant hounding, he decided it would be better to indulge with their antics, rather than trying to drive an even larger wedge between them. It seemed to keep them at bay for the time being. However, it wasn't long before the duo became a trio once more. Well, well, well. Look who's finally back. My, my. Someone sure took their sweet time getting overhauled. Ha, ha. Actually, I was put to work elsewhere until Knox was convinced I wouldn't have any issues once I returned. Well, it's about time you proved yourself then. We've been short-handed for weeks now. Short-handed? In what way? Knox would have called in help, wouldn't he? For work, yes. But not for our... other tasks. Other task? What other task? Have you forgotten already? Did they drop your smoke box at Swindon or something? Wait, you don't know, do you? Know what? I've been away for ages. Mr. Stard, you fool! He's been reinstated! What did you just say? Did Mr. Knox not inform you? Mr. Stard somehow made it out of that courtroom as an innocent man. Him and Mr. Knox are now both managing the line together. And we need all hands on deck to find a way to get him gone again. But... he... what? How? How did he- It doesn't matter how. What matters is what we are going to do about it. And that is? Whatever it takes. I sure hope it doesn't come to that. After last year, what I saw... I, I can't go through that. Not again. If it should come to that... We will do what we must. No one wants this for our quaint little home, dear friend. But if we are to come out of this alive, we need to be prepared for every outcome. I guess, but- Russell, I hope we can count on you. For if not- No, 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 of course. You can. I just- I, I wasn't prepared. Well, I hope you snap to it soon. Who knows what sort of nefarious plans that man is creating as we speak. You like what you're seeing, Shurlips? Oh, my apologies. You must be the great Saint Sebastian. Sup? I have heard quite a lot about you. Oh, really? The Saint of Destruction. Man from both London and New Wessex, as a trail of destruction follows you wherever you go. Whoa, you dirty bitch, work the shaft. Uh, excuse you? Oh, I'm sorry, I just like to dirty talk when someone is sucking my dick. Perhaps I should just skip to my point. I was just admiring the elegance of your design. It's not often one gets to see the last surviving saint in action. Well, they do say that everyone seeks perfection, so go right ahead. Look as long as you want. However, I must correct you. Oh? On what exactly? You are close, but no cigar. I am one of two surviving saints. Two surviving saints? But yes, indeed. Yours truly, who stands right here before you, and my sister St. Helena, who lives on Portston. No, I believe you are mistaken. There is no saint on Portston. Not anymore, anyways. Wait, no saint on Portston? What, so they sent her to Lymington? And put her on banking duties or something? 
Well, knowing her, she's not best placed about that. Oh, no. She is gone gone. She was condemned, oh, I don't know, six months ago? C condemned? A as in... Scrapped, yes. Therefore, you are the last remaining saint in existence. Will I... So then, when is this train departing? One down, four to go. What the... F is there a problem? The hell is this? Proposal. Deconstruction of the abandoned Grimstead branch? I believe you just answered your own question. Okay, fair point. But why now? It's been mostly ignored for like 10 years. Yes, and now that saw is finally being torn up. The steel will be taken away to be reused for other, more important projects. Huh. I see. You sound conflicted. Why? What does that branch matter to you? I'm less conflicted and more confused, mate. Is that so? Please, enlighten me. Alright. I know about what you're doing up there. Oh really? And what would that be? I may not be in the know-how all the time, but I have seen the new track, ballast, and equipment that's been cycling through the area. Now, of course, I haven't been up there since... Well, since you committed genocide. Charming. Continue. But I know you had plans for that area. So I'm surprised you're just letting it go. Well, it's not like I have much of a choice in the matter. And neither do you. I know what you're thinking. If it matters so much, just counter the proposal and do what I did with that pitiful branch of rejects. Harsh? Eh, but yeah, something like that. Unfortunately, you seem to have missed a very crucial thing. That being, look at who put forward the proposal in the first place. Huh? Um, uh, Alright. I don't see why that mad. Ah. Ah, indeed. So, no, Stard. There is no way from stopping this, even if I wanted to. Mr. Dickinson's word is final. That it is. So, when does it begin? This Monday should all go as planned. It should all go quite quickly. Seeing as all locomotives and stock were removed when the line was closed, the place is well and truly abandoned. Yeah, that makes it a bit easier. Oh fuck, ja Hmm? Jerusalem is nice this time of year! I see. Is there something you wish to tell me, Stard? Um, no, no. Everything is perfectly alright. It's all fine here, now. How are you? Stard. Oh, look, a distraction. Let's continue this conversation. Never. Go for Papa Palpatine. Yes, this is Mr. Stard. What? Oh, in the name of... I'll be there as soon as I can. And where are you off to? I've got an emergency on the Eastwood branch. I'm needed ASAP. Again? You know, Stard, you can't just keep running off at the slightest inconvenience. Especially with how frequent they are becoming. Yeah, well, I take responsibility for what I care about. And what of the railway? You have a job to do here as well, you know. Oh, I am sure you're more than capable of handling it on your own for a few hours. Unless you're finally admitting that you actually need my help to keep the line running. You know, the funny thing is... I know you're playing me, but you're right. You may go. Figured as much. Good day. What is your angle, Stard? 
What are you plotting? Well, it's been nice catching up again, Anthony, but I have a local waiting. I'll see you soon. Likewise to you, little brother. Have a nice run. Gregory, you're back already. Aye, the workmen found out wrong with me. Just some scraped paint. I'm glad to hear it. I was worried you'd be gone for a while. Uh, me too, fella. My experience was less than pleasant. I can believe that. What's even happened? I heard there was a mix-up with the roster. There were, aye. Ramsey were put on to take my passenger, and I were put on his mail train. Not that big a deal. I still got my night running. Plus, I got to get away from that karaoke night Clark insisted on holding. Ugh, don't remind me. Anyways, everything seemed fine. One moment I was rolling along, slowing for the hill down to Endon. The next, my wheels jumped the track and I was eating ballast. They had to get that loony pack to take my mail train on. Thank goodness you were slowing. I dread to think what could have happened if you were going line speed. Now, good I imagine. Did they figure out what caused the accident? They say it could have been a point failure. What caused it, though, they don't know. Apparently, the points were fine after they got me back on the rails. That is very strange. Aye. Hey. Anthony? Yeah? Anthony? Anthony? Anthony! <sighs> what? Your wagons are waiting for you. Sure. Get on with it. I want to get stuff done before I have a drink. Are you okay, Anthony? I'm fine. It's just... You didn't even react when I came in earlier. Nor when I greeted you. And? Maybe I wanted to be left alone. I see. Uh, just one question, if I may. Make it quick. Why did you stop working with British Railways? I mean, us. I figured it was down to you grieving, but Mr Knox doesn't even acknowledge you as part of our circle anymore. Your point? I guess... I. I just want to know what happened. Ask Knox. I'm sure he'll have a wonderful story to tell you. I... I guess not then. Mr. Starr drove to Spear as fast as he could to try and get the situation under control. In the time it took to get there, Clint had been called in to take the morning service in Seb's absence. While he was talking to one of the volunteers who had witnessed Seb's sudden departure, the station master came up and informed him that Seb had been spotted at High Plains. 
Mr. Stard thanked the two men before boarding Clint's train. When he arrived, he could see soft bellows of steam seeping out from the inside of the goods sheds. Either it was on fire, or Seb was hiding inside. Seb? 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 I heard you the first time, Bradford. Go away. Um, okay. Seb, what happened, man? You just up and left your coaches. Mm. Even for all you antics, that seemed out of character. And I'm not blind. I can see something's wrong. Oh, well, congratulations. I suppose you want an award now. What is your major malfunction, man? I just want to know what the hell happened. I'm on a tight schedule. I still gotta- Then stop pestering me. You're clearly not wanted here, so bugger off. No, for the love of- Fine. Be that way. Hello again, sir. Hmm? Oh, hey Clint. You look troubled, sir. What's the matter? Oh, just that sour heap of metal over there chasing me off while I'm already in a hurry. Sir, the shed isn't alive. It can't chase you off. Have you been drinking again? Not the shed. The engine hiding inside of the shed. Engine? Oh. So that's where he ran off to. It is indeed. He seemed to be in quite the state when he stormed past the sheds this morning. And in my experience, resolving that one's issues takes time. Time I don't have. Oh? What's the rush, sir? Dickinson called for the deconstruction of the Grimstead line. Oh. Well, that is a surprise. Especially if what you, Gladys, Riley, and Clark said about them doing construction work up there. It is, yes. Knox confirmed it to me this morning. Apparently the rebuild put a dent in our funds that never really recovered. I see. Then why the hurry? Because I'm a fucking dumbass. After all that happened, I completely forgot about Jeremy. He's been sitting up there all alone for nearly a year. I need to get up there and apologize to him, and also find a way to get him moved before they rip up any means of getting him down from there. Yes, I can see why that's urgent. But what about Seb? Not much I can do, Clint. He told me to bugger off, so I'll have to try again later, I'm afraid. Is that so? You should get on board, sir, or I'll have to depart without you. Of course. While he was still feeling a bit deterred from his failed attempt at getting through to Seb, he tried his best to brush it aside as he arrived into Grimstead for the first time in almost a year. His pace quickened as he got closer and closer to the shed, praying that he could explain himself in a way that Jeremy would forgive him. Jeremy! Jeremy! I'm so sorry! I... What the f... Wait... Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Fuck. Fuck. Are you serious? I- You know, you can keep screaming, but it won't solve anything. What the- He spun around to see who had called out to him. Leaning against the wall of the shed was Mr. Hoff. Jack? In the flesh. It's been a while, Bradford. How are you? I'm- I'm confused, mostly. Where have you been? And what happened to Jeremy? That is a very long story. 
I took a leave of absence to figure out my place and everything. Hell, I even went back to the U.S. for a while. But this is my home, and it's a home worth fighting for. So, I'm back. I can't say I blame you, but I will warn you, Jack, a lot has changed. I- I know, Bradford, I know. I kept up with the news, although it took a while to get them in America. Hence why I didn't appear sooner. I see. But that doesn't explain why the hell happened to Jeremy. Where is he? Is he safe? Is he... alright? He's alright. And he's well taken care of, I can assure you of that. And that's the gist, really. So, that's it then. I'm just going to be abandoned again. No, no, I promise. You will not be abandoned. I've just made a deal to keep you safe and get you out of here. You... you have? Yes, I have. A friend of mine knows a guy who wants to restore steam engines that have also been abandoned or sent for scrap. He's arriving here later today with two lorries to get you down from here and move to his workshop in Saxonhurst. Saxonhurst? How the hell am I supposed to get all the way down there on a lorry? I highly doubt they'd take you all the way there on a lorry. Probably just down somewhere you can safely be put back on the rails. That makes more sense. Jeremy and Mr. Hoff waited for a while, and before long, the sound of two lorries grew louder and louder, appearing behind the shed shortly after. Good day, you two. 45050 and Mr. Hoff, I assume? Yes, please, call me Jack, and this is Jeremy. You're Mr. Carrick's smash, I presume? It's a pleasure to meet you. I am indeed, and the pleasure is all mine. Now then, uh, Jeremy, I take it Mr. Hoff has informed you of my intentions for you? I believe so, yes. He told me you were going to restore me? That is the plan, yes. I've been told you've been stuck up here for a long time with some basic cosmetic and mechanical restoration done to you. Yes, sir, though that was a while ago. Still, that's better than no work at all. We'll give you a quick once over before we move you anywhere. Sounds good to me, sir. Let's get to it then. Over the duration of a few hours, Mr. Smash and his men would go over every inch of Jeremy, assessing his condition and lubricating all his moving parts as they went along. Once they were pleased with their work, they began carefully getting Jeremy and his tender loaded. After a bit of back and forth, Jeremy was finally loaded onto the remaining lorry and secured down with tight straps. He looked down at Mr. Smash and Mr. Hoff, who were both smiling up at him. Well then, Jeremy, how do you feel? I hope the straps are tight enough. Don't want you rolling off onto the main road. I think they're more than fine, sir. Any tighter and I think my boiler would fall between the frames. Ha! <laughs> Well, better safe than sorry. So I guess that's that then? I guess so. Thank you ever so much for everything. Well, I couldn't just let you stay up here and rust away now, could I? Besides, that bridge isn't going to get fixed anytime soon. True. I just wish I could repay you somehow. You and Mr. Stard. Repay us by living a happy life. I know that's all Bradford would want for you. Thank you. I will never forget this. And, if Mr. Stard makes it through this, tell him, tell him I'm eternally grateful. Don't worry, I will, and you have my word. I really hate to interject, but if we want to get you to your new home by the new year, we should get moving, of course. Thank you for coming on such short notice, Mr. Smash. I wish you the best of luck with your future ventures. Of course. Hard to pass up an opportunity like this. If you ever need help again, you know how to reach me. Safe travels. Likewise. And that's the last time I saw him. Last I heard, he's still getting restored at Mr. Smash's yard. Well, damn. I guess I missed my chance to see him off. At least he wasn't holding a grudge. If anything, he was thankful for everything you did. And hey, at least now he's got his mind at peace. True that. So then, what happens now? Now? Let's go practice medicine. What? Don't worry about it. Oh. Well, my leave ends soon, so I figured, since you were back in charge, you'd maybe take me back in? 
Well, yeah, no shit. That much was obvious. Why don't we head up to Redwick and get you caught up to speed with the current affairs of the railway? That sounds good to me, Bradford. Lead the way. They walked over to Mr. Stard's car. Before he got in, Mr. Stard turned towards the station and yard one last time, then got into his car and drove off towards Redwick, happy to finally have someone he could trust by his side once again. Sebastian, I know you can hear me, old friend. I'm not here to give you a lecture. Well, if you're not here to lecture me, then why are you here? I am here to lend a buffer. I can see that you are hurting, and I do not want you to face it alone. I am here for you, Sebastian. Seb sighed and backed out of the shed. I failed, Clint. Failed? Are you talking about the crash you had a while back? That was hardly your fault. No, Clint. I failed Bride. Failed Bride? However do you mean? Well, the last thing I promised her, that I gave her my word for, was that I would look out for Helena. Be there for her. Helena? Your sister? Wait, don't tell me. She's gone. She was scrapped a few months back. I had one job and I failed it. Oh, Sebastian. I'm so sorry for your loss. So, here I am. The last of my kind. How do I even live for that? I know how you feel. Oh, do you? How could you possibly- As far as I am aware, I too am the last of my kind. Though there were rumors that another of my kind was saved. Nothing has been confirmed. After the war, my class was but one of many that were deemed to have served their purpose. Right. I will not pretend to understand the burden that is weighing you down, but you were stuck in a shed. I know it's hard to believe, but you could not have prevented this. Of course I couldn't. Those British Railways bastards made sure of that. We've been allowed to work, I could have gotten to Swindon in time, and I could have brought her here, and I could have- That's enough, Sebastian. This is not what either of them would have wanted for you. I understand you will need time to grieve, but you can't go blaming yourself for this. They would want you to live on. Maybe. Deep down, you agree with me. I will cover for you as long as you need, Sebastian. But please, come back to the sheds tonight. We are all here for you, and you do not have to face this alone. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. I'll be heading back to Spear now. I hope we'll see you later tonight, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Clint. Thank you. I needed that. Anytime. Mr. Stard and Mr. Hoff soon arrived at Redwick, with Mr. Hoff looking around in awe, taking in the design of the new platform and yard layout. They entered the office, but found it to be empty. That's strange. Knox doesn't usually clock off for another few hours. Any idea where he could have gone? Could be anywhere, to be honest. But I know who to ask. Follow me. Yo, Grover! What? Make it quick. Someone is in a hurry. I run the yard alone and I have a massive wagon rake bound for New Wessex to put together. You figure it out, smartass. Yikes. Do you know where Mr. Knox is? I couldn't find him in the office. The shed. Like, piss off. Well, isn't he a colorful individual? Don't get me started. I trust that I made myself very clear then. Yes, sir. Crystal. We will be sure to inform the others. Good. 
the roster has been adjusted adequately. Heads up, sirs. Someone is approaching. Well then, 6827, I hope that clears up any rumours you may have heard about the Redwick Flyer. The service is still going ahead. Yes, thank you, sirs. That has cleared up quite a lot. Good. Now then, 1025... Yes, sir? I heard you were delayed on your return journey today. Care to explain yourself? Ashanta decided to play dodgems with a coal wagon, which ended as one could expect. I had to wait for it to be removed before I could proceed onwards. Hmm. I would have to confirm that. Go right ahead. I admire the confidence, but you would do well to drop the attitude. Ramsey with no attitude? That would be the day. Thanks. Ah, Mr. Sturd. Nice to see you actually at your work. Yes, I apologize for not being here. An emergency came up. Plus, I was not aware of your arrival today. Did I not inform you? My mistake. Quite. Emergency or not, I hear these leaves of absence are getting more frequent. Unfortunately, yes they are. But I wasn't just away for personal reasons today. I also went to the Grimstead branch to inspect if the land was safe for Hannes, the shunter at Colford, to run on during the removal of the infrastructure. Is that right? And what were your findings? Everything seems sturdy enough, up until the bridge over the lake, which looks to be in a poor state. I do apologize, but I don't believe that we've been introduced. You have, but it was a long time ago. This is Jack Hoff. He was my right-hand man before... Well, everything that happened. Ah, uh, yes. I believe I remember now. After the incident, I needed some time to figure things out, but I think it's time to come back to my job once more. Why don't we continue this talk in the office? There are many things you need to be caught up on. Of course. After you, gentlemen. Was that Mr. Hoff just now? It was, yeah. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Last I heard, he was in the States. Yeah, same here. It's good to see him again, though. Yeah, he was always a nice chap. Hmm. I don't buy it. What are you on about this time? Why would he seek out Stard, rather than just coming to Redwick to reclaim his job? It seems awfully suspicious, if you ask me. Heart. Everything is suspicious to you. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah, get over it. I get what you mean, Hart, but I doubt Mr. Hoff is anything like that. We shall see. I'd hate for Stard to get another ally. Well, if that does happen, we could always get Axel here to chase him off like he did with 6803. Richard, that's not- Oh, shut up, Richard. You know damn well that's a sore topic for me. Not a day goes by where I don't question what happened. Not cool, man. Not cool. Oh, calm down. It was only a joke. Besides, you did us all a favour. I'm not having this. That was a low blow, even by your standards. He will get over it, just as everybody else has. Now be quiet, will you? Us important engines need our rest. Important, my ass. What do you mean I'm made redundant? I mean exactly what I said. We no longer require your services, and we are letting you go. On what grounds? We already have two managers on the line. If I recall correctly, your job was to step in for Mr. Stard in case of illness or holidays. But due to him and Mr. Knox here both filling the same role, you are no longer required. Well, that's absurd. Can't we just- Fine. Jack? If I'm no longer required, then I will take my leave. But a few words for your consideration, if I may. 
Go right ahead. You two are a disgrace. It is quite clear that you both don't trust me much more than you do Bradford here, and that you have both made the biased decision to remove me from my job to keep me and him from working together again. And for that, fuck you both. I will walk out of here today without causing any further issues. No drama, no conflict. But just be aware of one simple thing. You've both just made an enemy for life, and not one you should be taking lightly either. Is that a threat, Mr. Hoff? No, sir. It's no threat. It's a fucking guarantee. If you are quite finished, you may take your leave. Gladly. Well, Stud, you know this man better than the two of us. Will he be an issue? Who? Jack? No, sir. He may be understandably angry, but he won't do anything stupid. That much, I can assure you. Well, it's hardly like your word is trustworthy. Look who's talking. That's enough. Stard, you may take the rest of the day off. What? Why? The two of you are clearly close, and I doubt you'd be able to focus after this conversation. Go and spend time with your friend. I... okay. Sure, I guess. What was that about? Why did you let him leave? Because if this plays out the way I think it will, we will have one less distraction to worry about. How so? It's all about the bigger picture, Knox. You will have to learn that one day. Now come along. We need to prepare for tonight. It didn't take long for Mr. Stard to find Mr. Hoff, who was waiting for him in the parking lot, looking towards a monument in the distance. You're right, Jack. That wagon over there. That's one of the ones from Riley's crash, isn't it? Yeah. That's when it all changed. Pretty much. When it became more than a chess game. More like a war. Too true. Well, the war isn't over yet. Not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear your resolve hasn't been crushed. What will you do now? Who knows? All I really know is, job or not, I'm not going anywhere. This is where my home is. No more running away. I'm happy for you, man. I just wish I could help you find a job. Between my work here and at the... Hang on. That's it! I have a job that you have the perfect skill set for. How? Those two just told me to fuck off. This doesn't involve them. Now come with me. Things will work out just fine. All right. Where to? You'll see. It was beginning to get dark out by the time the two men got to the destination Mr. Stard had in mind. Spear. Mr. Hoff took in his surroundings, not really having ventured here much in his days working under Mr. Stard, as he was walked to the front of the sheds. Evening, you lot. Evening, sirs. Wait, Mr. Hoff? In the flesh. It's nice to see you all again. Clint, Virgil, Rab, oh, and you. Ooh, hello, young mine. You look as strapping as ever. Oh, no. I'm never going to get over that. I see Seb hasn't come back yet, then. Not yet, no. I did manage to talk to him, but... But it seems it did the trick. Look. Why are you all looking at me like that? Did I run somebody over on my way here? No, Seb. We're just happy to see you. How are you feeling, Seb? I'm sorry I wasn't in the best of minds earlier. I just... Well, oh, Bradford, it's fine. It wasn't your fault. I didn't tell you what happened earlier because... I, I didn't want it to be true. What do you mean? Well, my last remaining classmate, my sister St. Helena, was withdrawn and scrapped while we were all locked up in this shed. I gave Bride my word that I would look out for her, but I was unable to. Oh, Seb, I'm so sorry. 
If I hadn't... No, sir, you've nothing to blame yourself for. One of us blaming ourselves all day is enough. The only person I blame is the bastard who condemned her. I can believe that. Are you going to be alright? I'll be fine in time. I'm with the right crowd anyway to recover quickly. At least I hope I can count on them. Of course you can. We are always here. I am glad. I hate to put a damper on things, guys. But I came here to talk to you all about something important. Something important, you say? What is it, sir? Well, guys, I don't know if there's any easy way to say this, but I have been getting into a fair share of trouble on the railway once again. Why this time? Because of my divided attention. Every time something happens here and I need to hurry over, I'm sure that bastard Knox lets Mr. Dickinson know what's going on. And today, he showed up without warning while I was away. Not a very good look, as I'm sure you all understand. To be fair, you never really had a good look. Even in your younger days. Dick. Anyways, the only solution I could find is... One I don't make lightly. As of tonight, I am stepping away from any responsibility of the Eastwood branch. Your what, sir? Well then, that is a surprise. But Bradford, what about us? Relax, guys. As I said, I didn't do this lightly. But I trust my replacement will carry the torch better than I could. Isn't that right, Jack? Wait, hold on. Me? Yeah. You. But, 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 Bradford, being your assistant is one thing, but running an entire branch line? On my own? You won't be on your own, mate. I will always be here to help and guide you. Besides, I've taught you everything I know. You've got this. I know you do. Of course, only if you accept. All right. I trust your judgment. Thank you, Bradford. Truly. I won't let you down. I know you won't. I will leave you all to get reacquainted. Engines, it has been an honor and a privilege being your manager. I can't wait to see you all progress and make Mr. Hoff and I proud. Thank you, sir. We won't let you down. <laughs> Just promise you'll visit us. Of course I will. Just don't burn anything down while I'm not here, Seb. One fuel tanker with some highly flammable liquid is coming right up. That's the spirit. And Gladys? Yes, Bradford? Try not to drive Mr. Hoff here too mad before he settles in. Oh, I don't know. He's such a handsome young fellow. I can hardly contain myself. Mother Mary, have mercy. <laughs> Yo, Rab. Mm, piss off your walloper. Yeah, that checks out. Mr. Star took one more look back at the engines before walking to his car, with tears slowly creeping into the corner of his eyes. This was one of the most difficult choices he had ever had to make, but he knew Jack would be up for the task. He drove into the night, a load lifted off his shoulders, and a bright future for the Eastwood branch on the horizon. Well then, I take it that everyone is rounded up. Yes, sir. Everyone we could get a hold of. Less than I expected, but it will do. Well then, let us begin.
That's strange. Nox doesn't usually clock off for another few hours. Any idea where he could have gone? Could be anywhere, to be honest. But I know who to ask. Follow me. Yo, Grover. Hello there. Another happy landing. Someone is in a hurry. Well, have you noticed the shields are still up? Yikes. Do you know where Mr. Knox is? I couldn't find him in the office. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! Bring balance to the force! Not leave it in darkness! Well, isn't he a colorful individual? Don't get me started.